So I'm going the project that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to run one of these walks in two weeks' time. So if you happen to be in London and you want to take you know, a fun, sorry, in two weeks' time, in 16th, I think 15th and 16th of July. So um, lovely. A UCL economics walk. Uh, a little bit about my, myself. Um, this is me. Yeah. And I'm part of Center for Teaching and Learning Economics at UCL. What is this project? What is a UCL Economics Walk? It's basically uh, an in a walking tour of Bloomsbury area. We visit places that have an economic story to tell. Here, we're visiting the house of Vladimir Lenin, right? At the heart of Bloomsbury, London, there's definitely an economic story to tell. So this is a public engagement project, you know, using the walking tour as an excuse to talk about economics. Uh, so let me give you a bit of an overview of this. Uh, I have given this tour face to face to more than 16 times and also virtually, yeah, believe it or not, virtual, you know, walking tour. Uh, for three times, more than 200 people have attended this walk so far. And they include members of public, students, parents, colleagues. It's actually a good way to get to know your colleagues, you know. And I have given this in very different occasion, departmental open days, festival of culture, it's all academic festival. Uh, these are the stops in our walking tour. And, you know, with normal walking tour, the stops are random, you know, this place and then that place. Let me give you a lot of facts, 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 facts. But the tour, there is themes. All the stops are connected to three themes. And then there are schools of thought. Political uh, liberalism, political liberalism, economic liberalism, socialism, and then, quote unquote, you know, eugenics, scientific racism. Yeah. So any stops, you know, the, you know, any, all of the stops we visit kind of connect to these three intellectual themes. And this is us. Let me just give you an example. Visiting the house of Keynes in Bloomsbury. So again, I use this as an excuse to talk about, you know, uh, uh, ideas of Keynes, new Keynesians today, right? A little bit of economics, you know, Keynesian fiscal stimulus, and more importantly, relevance for today. What would Keynes say if he was around? What would he say about 2008 crisis? What would he say about COVID fiscal package? So basically using those, you know, using these locations as an excuse to talk about economic concepts and the relevance from today. And in every stop, we'll have a discussion with the audience. It's interactive. What what would you think that Keynes said about COVID fiscal package if he was around today, right? So relevance for today and then the discussion. So this was an example. I'm just going to jump. These are the concepts, economic concepts that I cover. I jump. But why do I do that? Let's go a little bit deeper. The first thing is demystifying economics, democratizing economics. You know. Economics don't know how to talk to ordinary people, right? So we have a confidence, an issue of a trust, problem of trust. Actually, the public put more trust on the weather forecasters than economists. And it's all on us, you know? We, we lost our uh, ability to communicate our ideas. So this is a public en engagement project trying to demystify economics, communicate economics. So that was the first goal. The second goal is community building, right? So students arrive, parents arrive, member of public, Local community, you know, NGOs, you know, you build a community, you sense of identity. This is your area. This is the story of it, right? And the third thing, decolonize the classroom. So this is an outreach project, right? In the lecture hall, I'm the king. 
But once you get out of the lecture hall and you go to the street, things start to change. You know, random people just come out and, you know, it really changes the balance of power, right? It, it, it has an equalizing effect. Now, you know, let's look at, this is an outreach project, you know. Look at the students, they're owning the place, the sense of confidence, you know. So it really changes the power structure when you go out of the conventional classroom into the streets and talk about a subject. So that was a third goal, decolonizing the economics. And if I want to put all the pedagogical innovations together, if I want you to remember one slide from this presentation, that's it. What's the new thing about this? UCL Economics Walk, is a location-based method of teaching. You use locations to communicate economics. Digital technology, which I'm going to come to in a moment. And it's dialogic. It's all about, you know, I'm not going to teach you economics. We're going to discuss economics with each other. It's a dialogue. Hand out, a little bit of technology. I give the handout to people. You know, which goes through the characters that I'm talking about. And interestingly, I use QR code. This is the technology bit. So I use this, you know, to, as an excuse to draw people to a lot of interesting, you know, digital technologies that are out there. You know, for instance, when I'm talking about history of eugenics, this is a very good documentary, right? They can scan the QR code and go there. So that was a use of technology. Dialogic method, you know, as I said, in most walking tours is just facts, facts, more facts, more facts, and you, you remember less than 5% of them, right? And mine is just get rid of all the facts, stick to key points, let's discuss them. Let's have a conversation. You already know economics, you just need to discover that you know. You already know comparative advantage. Through dialogue, you see that I'm already, this is a concept you know, uh, that I encounter in my everyday life. So that's the philosophy. Role plays. You know, I, you know, I ask you know, people to put their, you know, uh, we do a lot of role plays and interactive games in the, in the tour. I'll give you an example later on. So that was a face-to-face -face version. Then bam, pandemic happened. You cannot give a face-to-face -face walking tour. So the big challenge is that how can you give a virtual walking tour? So I decided to you know, go virtual. And the biggest challenge was that I had to recreate these things virtually. And the most important challenge was this. Digital technology was already there by virtual being virtual. How can you make it interactive? How can you create a sense of location? sense of location. I use Google Map, right? And you can actually sc scan the QR code and it brings you to that, to that Google Map. So these are the stops we're going to visit you know, in the virtual map. Right? And again, all these stops are divided under three themes. Liberalism are all purple stops. Socialism, red stops. Quote unquote, scientific racism and nationalism on the blue spots. And then, you know, I projected myself in front of the screen. I'm going to wrap up. I am just so proud. Every time that I say this, I get goosebumps. You know, I'm just so proud to let you know that we held, our department held the first mixed gender university class in Britain. In 1871, our department held the first mixed gender co-educational university class in Britain in 1871. We were at the forefront of promoting equal access to women. And this is the safe, very first cohort that studied economics. So that's the first. Remember, very first stop. We talked about political liberalism. Then we went to the forces of conservatism, King's College London. Then we went back to number three. Sorry, number tr three, yeah. Number three, which was UCL economics, you know, economic liberalism. Now I'm going to talk about the second theme of 
our so history use of, of digital ideas. technology, right? I created a sense of location with this. The digital technology was already there. And the good thing about it is that I, now that we went virtual, I can, you know, try to engage people in new ways. I can play them historical clips, you know. I could play, you know, um, for instance, how much time do I have? Five minutes. So let me play this. For instance, uh, when we are visiting Thomas Malthus, you know, the doom and gloom guy, you know, why poor have a lot of children and we're all going to die. So <laughs> dismal science, exactly. So when we were you know, in the virtual tour where we are visiting this location, I play this dialogue from Christmas Carol. You will agree, I'm sure, that many thousands of people lack the basic necessities, and many hundreds of thousands lack ordinary comforts. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons, sir. And the Union workhouses, are they still in operation? I, yes, they are. I only wish I could say they were not. I support those institutions I have mentioned, and I expect the poor to make use of them. Those who are badly off must go there. Many cannot go there, and many would rather die. They'd rather die. They'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. They'd rather die and decrease the surplus population. So basically, digital creates opens the door for new forms of engagement, right? And I'm going to jump. So the digital skill for the virtual is already there using the Google map for creating a sense of location and then remaining the dialogic character. I'm going to say two things and I'm going to wrap up. The good thing about the virtual is that it allowed students as producers. You know, I started now, I'm co-presenting with students now. And I partner up with other universities. So I partner up with George Washington University in our virtual tour and I presented with Sean. Sean is a student, you know, we present, we co-presented this walking tour together. And this is him talking about Uncle Carl. Of course, everyone loved it. You know, what a wonderful opportunity. Ramin is amazing, you know. And I'm gonna jump those and, <laughs> and I'm gonna wrap up uh, by saying these things. Uh, so, goals of this, just to remind you why I'm doing this, demystifying economics, democratizing economics, and uh, connecting economics to other stories, you know, and uh, community building and decolonizing uh, the classroom. Once you get out into the street, things really change. Pedagogic value of it is a location-based method of teaching economics. Believe it or not, you can use this as any campus, right? Uh, you don't need to have Bloomsbury around you as long as you have a Tesco store or a bridge that has an economic story to tell, you can use this method of location-based uh, to engage people. So location-based, dialogic, don't shower people with facts, discuss few things with them. They, uh, then they'll remember forever. And then creative use of technology. So if I just want to give you one thing about this, is this location-based method of teaching, digital technology, and dialogic method. Thank you. Right, the one question I've got to ask, do you walk around London with a rose in your hand or an umbrella? <laughs> created a UCL economic walk sign. Oh, good. I'm so pleased. Uh, thank you for that very energetic <laughs> presentation. Have we got any questions? Have we? Oh, great. Um, firstly, I feel very energised. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's more about the spaces in between the locations, um, because I think what we've certainly found, I'm, I'm from uh, UWE in Bristol, and a lot of the discussions we've had are around the, the peer learning and the lack of the, the sort of sense of a peer group. Now, I'm assuming when you do the walks, as you walk from one location to another, that, that sort of the dialogue and the sort of ownership of, of uh, the, the sort of narratives around the subject area really are sort of enriched. 
I can see in the digital other things start to happen, you know, the co-production. But I'm just wondering about that sort of the peer interaction between location spaces. Thank you. That's, that's the first thing I do. The very first thing I introduce myself and then ask some uh, ask the audience imagine you're writing the history of london what would be the title of your book discuss it with the person next to you so for the very first moment they need to discuss it with the person next so they realize that i'm not going to shower them with facts it's about them discussing this with each other and me and i i make it very clear from the beginning Thank you. I look forward to Ruth Weir, UCL. Um, I look forward to joining you at some point on this walk. I did my PhD at UCL and feel I've learned more about UCL in this last 20 minutes uh, than I did four years studying there. Um, my question is, A, can I get my team to come and join your talk? Is it, but is it embedded into any of your modules uh, for the students or is this purely extracurricular and outreach based? You purely extracurricular, yeah, and more than happy to, you know, we can exchange, yeah, more than happy to have you, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was such an interesting talk. Um, so now that you've done this also virtually, going forward, are you going to continue running these walks um, on the virtual sort of platform, or is it solely now going to be physical again? Uh, both both virtual because I, it gives a, it opens up a lot of opportunity for, to pair up with other universities and it's much easier for co-presenting with students i'm going to stick with that definitely you know and uh, i'm definitely going to keep the virtual one